All right, well, welcome everyone to an introduction to Forest Resources. My name is Brian Schneider, and I'll be your instructor for the course this semester. I'd like to start the semester off with a quick examination of the profession of forestry as a whole and, and how we value forest land in a very broad sense. Also in this module, we're going to cover how foresters meet the resource needs of society through the management of inherently complex e ecological systems. What's displayed here is a healthy yellow poplar, uh, roughly 65 years in age, uh, growing in a rich cove natural community in western North Carolina. To begin our examination of the value of forest land, this is a good tree to utilize, um, but you could, you could easily choose another. A uh, common tree in the southern Appalachians, yellow poplar is valuable for a variety of reasons, some obvious and some not so obvious, um, and so we're, uh, we're just going to start here. When people think of the, the value of trees, it's common to associate trees with some amount of financial value. Its value is saw timber, or its value is pulpwood, or its value is biomass. Where trees surely have a financial value, that doesn't, that doesn't represent their complete value. And we're going to cover all of these ways that we value trees and forest land throughout this lecture. But to go back to the yellow poplar example, what this photo shows is the production of high-grade plywood destined to be turned into panels for furniture stock and construction material. In this instance, the yellow poplar, which is being peeled and glued back together to make the panel, has a financial value to the landowner when it was purchased on the stump by the logger. It has a value to the trucker who carried the log from the landing to the mill. It has a value to the logger who sells it to the mill. It has a financial value to the mill who pays the logger. It has a value to the mill workers who get paid a wage to produce the product. And it has a value to the retailer who buys the plywood from the mill to sell to consumers. But again, the, the value of trees certainly, certainly doesn't stop there. The photo here displays the, the same rich cove natural community uh, to which the, the yellow poplar is, is a member, right? When taken as a whole, healthy, productive forest land is valuable for both tangible and intangible reasons, regardless of whether we have the ability to put a financial value on it. Uh, and again, we're going to get to a lot of those values as we move through the lecture here. Uh, but in the meantime, I bet you could probably come up with a few, um, a few reasons on your own uh, as to why uh, healthy forest land is, is valuable to you, um, aside from just its financial value for the, for the timber that can be cut out of it. Just to get you thinking a little more, uh, here's a photo taking, taken during a timber harvest on an uh, area of private forest land in western North Carolina. Now the, the question is, does this timber harvest have value beyond the financial ones mentioned above? Obviously, the logger wouldn't be cutting those trees if he, if he weren't making money doing it, and the landowner wouldn't be selling those trees if he, if he, he or she weren't, weren't making money during the process. Um, but is all timber harvesting an ecologically negative thing, or can we achieve some positive ecological impact through harvesting while also realizing the positive financial benefits? I've heard timber harvesting described as a necessary evil before, and I don't believe that's a valid characterization of the practice of forestry. If, if it were, then I would, I would probably do something else with my time. Um, so let's take a step back to put the discipline of forestry in, in perspective a little bit. As the name would imply, a forest ecosystem is one in which the predominant vegetation is trees, right? An ecosystem, by definition, contains both biotic, or living components, and abiotic, non-living components, which comprise the physical environment. Two key points to keep in mind here. First, even though trees are generally the most obvious components of these, these systems, they comprise just a, a fraction of the, the total biodiversity that's there. Second, forest ecosystems are inherently dynamic. They're always changing, regardless of whether or not we directly interact with them. Um, as foresters, if we're tasked with managing the trees, by extension, we are having an impact on the entire system, and hopefully a, a positive impact. It's, it's kind of sobering to recognize that forest ecosystems comprise just 30% of the world's land surface, especially as we begin to discuss the ecological importance of, of healthy forest land.
Aldo Leopold is, is largely recognized as one of our country's first wildlife management practitioners. In addition, he was a formerly trained forester and ecologist. I'll let you go ahead and read the quote for yourself taken from his work at Sand County Almanac. In my opinion, understanding his definition of a natural community, one in which humans are an equal member, is an important first step towards understanding the, dis the discipline of forestry. It's a recognition that as biological organisms, we rely on our natural environment to survive, but we must utilize those resources in a sustainable way. Properly planned and implemented forestry allows us to meet multiple objectives at a time, may they be financial, ecological, or social in nature. Forestry mimics natural disturbance. It uses natural processes as a model to guide management and forest manipulation practices. The image here is one of, is of one of the most common forms of natural disturbance in the Southern Appalachians, a relatively small scale wind throw or blowdown event. Based on the site characteristics, the spatial extent of the opening created by the disturbance and the type of vegetation present prior to the disturbance, we can reasonably predict what tree species will become established next. We can also reasonably predict how such an event will affect other ecological components uh, like, like wildlife habitat. We can make these predictions through an understanding of ecology, the study of forest ecosystems. Forestry takes ecology one step further by applying those principles to an achievable management goal. We can make a hole in the canopy just like this if, if what results is of value to us. We just utilize a chainsaw instead of waiting on the wind to do it for us. Now to go back to our timber harvest example, depending on the size of the gap created by the harvest, we can predict what will happen next based on our understanding of what would occur following a small wind throw event. In this instance, the understory white pine that is already present will likely grow to fill in the gap and any shade tolerant species already present below the main canopy, red maple for instance, will likely be supported as well. The landowner and logger will make money on the trees harvested and hopefully the ecological result is what the landowner and forester planned on. There are a variety of ways and patterns to harvest trees to support particular tree species and wildlife habitat components and we're going to get to all that later in the semester. For the time being, it's just important to recognize that forestry is applied ecology. We utilize ecological principles to tailor our management towards meeting our management objectives. It's also important to recognize that not all natural disturbances are small uh, or subtle. Though generally less frequent in the eastern United States, there are instances of larger scale natural disturbances that have an entirely different ecological result. Uh, the image here is a, a photo from the U.S. Forest Service uh, of an aerial, it's an aerial image of a southern pine beetle outbreak in Georgia. The southern pine beetle is a native insect, right? So the, these infestations are natural. You know, they're cyclical events that result in mortality across hundreds and thousands of acres at a time. So not all of our natural disturbances here are, are small in nature. Here's a portion of a seven acre clear cut at DuPont State Forest just outside Brevard in Western North Carolina. Though there are some ecological differences between this and the previous slide, there are a lot of similarities as well. In both instances, the entire canopy is removed across a substantial area of forest land. The trees that will become established are those that are well suited to growing quickly in open sunlight. In both scenarios, there are patches of young forest between patches of more mature forest, offering in a, in a really general sense similar habitat components. Where the, the beetle outbreak was unplanned, the harvest at DuPont was, was restoration based, designed to move a single species white pine plantation towards a more diverse species condition, in increasing the amount of young forest available for wildlife browse and cover, and, and also to provide an educational opportunity for forest landowners who may be interested in conducting similar management on their property. DuPont got paid for the wood harvested and the logger got paid by the mill for the wood harvested, um, but they also achieved the the ecological result that they were that they were looking to achieve it's a really good example of multiple objectives being achieved simultaneously through through proper forest management This slide here uh, provides the best definition of forestry that I have. Um, as, as foresters, we recognize that forest resources are renewable, but they cease to be if exploited in an unsustainable manner. And 
and we're going to get into sort of what society demands of these resources shortly. Foresters and forest technicians do a variety of things. We often examine forest land in a systematic way to develop management plants, which may involve harvesting trees to provide conditions suitable for growing something else or to free up site resources for those trees we're leaving behind. We alter the forest landscape to provide for the habitat needs of different species of wildlife. Uh, we manage forest land to maintain clear water, clean watersheds and in some instances manage them to increase the water yield of those watersheds. We manage the recreational use of forest land, uh, especially on public forest land. There are branches of forestry that are primarily concerned with wildfire management, uh, fire suppression, and prescribed fire use. There are opportunities for trained foresters and technicians to conduct research regarding forest ecosystems and our use of them. Uh, forestry is a big profession, and there are a, a wide range of, of professional opportunities out there. 